Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews. I'm your host, that's Beast, and today we are looking at Horror of Dracula, released in 1958. Horror of Dracula stars Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, Michael Goff, Melissa Stribling, Carol Marsh, John Van Essen, Valerie Gaunt, Olga Dickey, Janina Fay, and Charles Lloyd Pack. Horror of Dracula was directed by Terence Fisher. Now, this is another one that was directed by Terence Fisher and Jimmy Sangster wrote the script for. But unlike his previous films that I've reviewed on this channel with The Mummy and Curse of Frankenstein, um, Horror of Dracula, he writes some really off-the-wall stuff that I just, as a Dracula fan, I can respect going in a different direction, but I don't like these decisions he made in this film. Um... Number one, the movie opens with um, John Van Essen's Jonathan Harker coming to Dracula's castle in Transylvania. But he is not coming there like he was in the original Bram Stoker's novel to sell him real estate. No. Jimmy Sangster changed it to where he is coming there to try and kill Dracula. And that might have been really cool if they had not immediately killed Jonathan Harker in the story. And later on, he becomes a vampire, and Von Helsing has to kill him. And the changes he made to Arthur Holmwood, played by Michael Goff in this, um, in which, you know, instead of Jonathan Harker being engaged to Mina, Arthur Holmwood is married to Mina. And... Lucy is his sister, and she was the fiancé to Jonathan Harker. So it, it just, these changes did not need to be done. Um, and he doesn't put uh, Renfield as a character in this thing, but... Um, I didn't really miss Renfield. I don't. I didn't care about Renfield as far as this goes. This this story could be on its own, and it didn't need him. Um, but the changes made to um, those characters just it just seemed off for me in this film. Um, and Doctor Seward appears in this as just a minor little character in like maybe one or two scenes. Um, and that is just a drastic change from what he was. I mean, Dr. Seward was a more prominent character than Arthur Holmwood was in the original Bram Stoker's novel. And even the movies with uh, Bela Lugosi. Um, but... The, the killing of Jonathan Harker is just a... a uh, that is something that should have never made it through the studio heads. I mean, he should have... You know, he could have came up with that and, and pitched it to them. And immediately they should have shut that shit down. But they didn't. They went along with it. And they did this. Um, and this is not even a shock moment where... It could have been like a Marion Crane psycho kind of thing. 
because the actor they got to play freaking Jonathan Harker is nobody. I have not seen this guy in anything else that I can think of from Hammer. Uh, John Von Essen, he, he, had, he was nobody. I mean, I'm sure he must have done some other stuff. That's fine. But, I mean, none of it of note to where he should have been given this role. You know, I could have saw where they would have put a name in here in this role. And then killed him off at the beginning, and it would have been a shock. You know, I could have maybe got, got behind that just because of the whole, you know, um, Marion Crane thing, even though this predated Psycho by uh, two years. Um, but yeah, um, Peter Cushing is great, though, in this film as uh, Van Helsing. And Christopher Lee is in his element as uh, Count Dracula. The only problem I have with the writing um, Jimmy Sangster did for Dracula is that, um, yes, he is scary. He is physically imposing. He is badass in this film. But in this variation of the character, he is really lacking any kind of cool sensuality, which for a Dracula film, Dracula not being a, you know, seductive. Now, I'm not saying that they don't talk the talk of where he is doing scenes. There is a scene where he uh, seduces Lucy, which it's okay. It's, it's serviceable. Um, but what they do with him with Mina, I mean, she gets tricked into going to meet with Dracula by this messenger. And then we don't see what happens. She just comes back and she's automatically bit. So she's already basically under his influence. And then later, he comes to visit her. You get him walking in, she backs up to the bed, and she is fully uh, working with Dracula, basically, and trying to stop Von Helsing and her husband, Arthur, from uh, bringing Dracula down, which um, would have worked really well if they had given it time for him to seduce her and do a... So, yeah, they, they talk the talk of making him seductive and everything, but the, but the film just does not walk the walk. Um, to take a wrestling term and put it in here. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's very unfortunate but I really did love um, Peter Cushing's um, portrayal of uh, Dr. Von Helsing. I mean, he is just so... And it is a stark contrast to his portrayal of Baron Victor Frankenstein in Curse of Frankenstein, um, where he was a much darker figure. And this, he is just a full-blown, cool, good guy hero. And uh, you're behind him 110% from the start of this film. Um, but yeah, the, the, the missteps that uh, Jimmy Sangster does in the writing um, kind of hurt this film, I think. Um, Terrence Fisher is excellent, though, as far as his direction, as usual. As this man was a very underrated talent that I don't think he just... He does not get enough credit for how good of a filmmaker he was. So, in spite of the problems with the script and the idiotic decisions, um, I will still give this film an 8.0 out of 10 because the performances are really good in here. 
Um, I really liked Melissa Stribling as Mina early in the movie. That's why I was really disappointed that they did not give the seduction of her the proper time to make an impact to the story. Because as it is, it's just pushed through and just... It just happens, it just happens, so she's all of a sudden on Dracula's side. You know, one minute she's supportive of her husband and helping um, Von Helsing and wanting to find Lucy's so-called killer. And then the next she's, I'm on your side, Drac. So that was, that was just not good. So probably the first of this collaboration between Terrence Fisher and Jimmy Sangster that I didn't fully um, like. Um, but it's still, it's still a pretty damn good film, and it was one of my dad's favorite films. So uh, this review's for you, Dad. Um, <laughs> but what did you think of this film? Do you agree with my review? Do you disagree? I know my dad disagrees. <laughs> my dad loved this film. But um, <laughs> um, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, if you like this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Because it really does help this channel out a lot. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed um, these hammer reviews I've been doing and I uh, hope you'll keep coming back and uh, watch the uh, future reviews that I'm about to be doing. Alright, thanks for watching.